Hey everyone, so we are at a point now where it's starting to feel like we are reading a chosen one story, considering how many factors seem to be pointing towards Luffy being a product of destiny this entire time. Ideas such as being Joy Boy, being the sun god Nika, and now even potentially having the special chosen one's devil fruit. Now, you could make the argument that this is nothing new, and that Luffy was always clearly a product of destiny. But I would disagree, as the reality is that, you know, this chosen one idea only really became the consensus view among readers in Wano itself, and that prior to this arc, most of the ideas and phrasing of the story regarding destiny was a lot more ambiguous and open to interpretation. Fate certainly played a role, but it was ambiguous to what degree, and let's not forget the fact that many One Piece fans have spent decades mocking other series such as Naruto for playing into Chosen One cliches that One Piece was supposedly above. After all, even though ideas such as the Will of D, the Dawn of the World, the man Roger was waiting on, etc. have been around, there was an important distinction between how these ideas were viewed before and after Wano. Before Wano, when the ideas were brought up of the one who will bring the dawn of the world, the one who will fulfill the will of D, and the man Roger was waiting for, it sounded as though it was referring to the notion that someone will come along who will be capable of doing certain things. Essentially, it sounded as though the world is waiting on someone capable of achieving certain things and Luffy is simply shaping up to be the man who can actually do it. He will be capable of fulfilling the will of D. He will be capable of bringing the dawn, etc. That is different from the new emerging idea that Luffy is the man who is essentially scripted from birth to do these things. Essentially the distinction between there being a general destiny that needs to be fulfilled and Luffy happening to be the one to rise up to be able to fulfill that destiny versus the idea that Luffy's own destiny from day one was to do this, this, and this. Now, am I saying that it is bad that Luffy seems like he might be the chosen one? No. Am I saying that Luffy even is the chosen one? No, maybe, we need to wait and see a little bit, maybe. What I am here to explain today, however, is that the reality is that the chosen one cliche is now becoming more blatant in One Piece and that is not necessarily good or bad on its own. Rather, what is going to matter is entirely how Oda chooses to tackle it, because there is a lot of evidence to suggest that Oda is not going to be as straightforward about it as many think. So before we get into it, make sure to subscribe for more videos every week. And just as you saw CP0 sneak up on Luffy, so too can big companies and cyber criminals sneak up on you while you're surfing the web, unless you have Surfshark VPN, the sponsor for this video. When you're online, you are at risk of having your data being acquired by companies or cyber criminals. But with Surfshark VPN, your data is encrypted. What does that mean? Well, it means that you are essentially completely invisible online. No one can get your data, no one can track what you're doing, even Surfshark itself does not know what you do online. Not to mention all ads and malware are blocked as well. And the best part is that with Surfshark VPN, you can change your location online to anywhere you want on the globe, meaning that you can virtually travel to other countries and get instant access to all the free movies, TV, sports, etc. that they have available for streaming there that isn't available in your country. So a whole new world of options in terms of what you can watch immediately opens up once you use Surfshark VPN. And yes, that includes anime. And for my viewers, you can actually get Surfshark VPN right now, today, for 83% off and three months free by using my code MORGE. The link is in the description below. And you get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have literally zero risk trying it out. Again, just hit the link in the description below and use my code MORGE. So that aside, let's talk Destiny in One Piece, particularly with how it applies to Luffy. And first of all, let me be very clear, many of you are not going to like what I have to say at first, but stick with me and hear the whole point I'm trying to make because I'm going to have to say some things you don't want to hear before what I'm saying makes sense. To start with, in general, the idea that Luffy is a chosen one character, predestined from the start to play out some role, is somewhat directly contradictory to the single most important theme in the series, freedom. 
specifically with regards to free will. Free will and determinism are generally considered to be philosophically conflicting ideas. Many of us, including myself, consider Luffy to be the ultimate embodiment of freedom and free will in fiction. I think Luffy represents that ideal better than any other character I have ever read about. But the reality is, Luffy being all about freedom is diametrically opposed to the idea that he is simply playing out a predetermined role as a child of prophecy who is set in stone to do certain things from birth. That's a contradiction, plain and simple. Those two ideas do not work together. Even just thinking back throughout the series about the qualities that make Luffy such a refreshing protagonist, so much of it stems from the fact that Luffy is a character that breaks set rules. Luffy breaks boundaries, he cannot be put in a box, and we enjoy watching his journey so much precisely because he continues to surprise us with his decisions that seem to defy the notion of any set path. I mean, very literally, this is the type of character that when presented with three paths will ultimately go in a direction completely different from any of them, the direction nobody else expects. That is the essence of Luffy. Not to mention the potential issues that come with Luffy's devil fruit being special. So much of what makes Luffy, Luffy, that has been harped on throughout the series is his ingenuity in making a devil fruit that is very decidedly not special into something spectacular. Oda goes out of his way to highlight that Luffy's fruit is not special compared to some of his opponents. The fact that he does not have some chosen one ability, or even one of the better abilities in the world, is one of the key traits that makes Luffy a standout main character. Even literally just one arc back, Luffy's biggest struggle was the fact that his devil fruit was strictly worse than his opponent's devil fruit, and the greatness of Luffy is seeing him overcome that inferiority anyway. There's no real way to spin it. A lot of what we are learning about Luffy in this, the Wano arc, about Luffy's inherent specialness, Luffy's inherent destiny, goes directly against the foundation, the core of his character, and what made him a great character in the first place. You can cite small things like, well, Luffy always came from a special family, his dad was Dragon, his grandfather was Garp, and no, that's not even close to the same thing as what we're getting in Wano now. There's a world of difference between having a strong family versus being born with your entire role pre-written to be the chosen one from the start, and your final achievement basically scripted from the start. It changes the whole lens through which we view Luffy's journey and the challenges that he has overcome. At least, that's what it seems like on the surface. Here is where I'm going to start talking about the things that no one else is talking about and why I have great faith in Oda. Now, to be clear, yes, Destiny has always certainly played a role in One Piece. There have been moments where characters outright talk about how fate seems to shine on Luffy and his crew. That's nothing new. However, the beauty of One Piece is that it has always been made extremely clear that fate is not this ironclad thing. Rather, it seems that the ideas of fate and destiny are the sort of gentle, guiding, invisible hand, but the manner in which events ultimately play out is never set in stone, and characters have control over their own destiny. And that is not my opinion, rather while so many are jumping the gun and getting wrapped up in this revisionist history of how One Piece was always about destiny, blah blah blah, no, I am actually looking at what the f***ing story is spelling out for us. The message that Oda has openly, blatantly, explicitly made clear that even if certain things are set in the future, everyone has the power to change it. That is the message that Oda spelled out for us clear as day. The future, destiny, fate, none of that is set in stone. Yes, we have prophecies and future sight and all of that stuff now, but the entire point that trumps all of that is that at the end of the day, the actions people take can change that because this is not a story about destiny. This is a story about freedom. That is why just as much as fate has been brought up in the past, so too has the ambiguity of fate been established. The idea that there are crossroads of fate, that things can go in unexpected directions. Even high probability predictions are ultimately still just that, predictions. This line right here spelled out for us with zero ambiguity is what needs to be remembered above all else. 
The power to change the future is what is most important. And it's particularly interesting that this was established so definitively in Whole Cake Island, the Ark, right before Wano. In Wano, Oda is suddenly building up so much this notion that Luffy has been destined to do certain things all along, that he is set on this specific path. Yet right before this arc, Oda also established the meaninglessness of such constraining ideas. And in fact, that very arc, Luffy was fighting a man who was all about seeing the future. Luffy's battle in Whole Cake Island was about overcoming Katakuri's ability to see the future. I don't want to hear people talking about how One Piece was supposedly built on the idea of destiny and fate all along. Because sure, yes, it was, to a degree. But that's the key, it matters to a degree. But ultimately, freedom and free will, and particularly the free-spirited actions of Luffy to dictate his own journey and what his own story will be, that is what matters more than anything else in this story. That is why I am confident that Oda is not about to go down the oldest, most boring, uninspired cliche in the book of just turning his main character into the predestined chosen one and letting the rest play out from there. Now hold on before you angrily type away. Am I saying that the story is ruined if Luffy is the chosen one? No, not at all. Luffy could be Joy Boy, Luffy could be Nika, maybe his devil fruit is special in ways we didn't know. None of that alone contradicts the idea of who Luffy is. Rather, it is going to be how that plays out and the messaging that comes with it that matters. If Luffy really is a chosen one through and through, then what I look forward to the most is seeing how Luffy flips that concept on its head. Because that is generally what he always does, anytime people start framing him in a certain way or try to put him in a box. If Luffy really is the embodiment of freedom, then seeing the path that Luffy chooses when he is forced into that cliche role of being a chosen one savior of the world, seeing how Luffy potentially subverts that idea could possibly only add to the sense that Luffy really is the freest, most unpredictable character out there. What that could look like, I have no idea, but so long as it is congruent with the essence of Luffy's character and the ideas that Oda has built the story on, I think it will be great. Not to mention there is also the huge possibility that a lot of what we are seeing right now is actually Oda deliberately tricking us, and this whole idea around Luffy being this special chosen one is perhaps a giant red herring. These ideas of Luffy being Joy Boy, the sun god Nika, even if it really is the Gomu Gomu no Mi that is being talked about, it is entirely possible that Oda is very deliberately misleading readers across the board, only to ultimately reveal that none of this applies to Luffy, but rather that Luffy will still probably be the man to bring the dawn of the world, simply following his own path. Or perhaps Luffy is Joy Boy, but he's not Nika. Perhaps Tama's fruit is special instead of the Gomu Gomu no Mi. Or perhaps Luffy's fruit is special, but he himself is not Joy Boy. There are many other combinations that could be introduced as the answers to all these mysteries. I say this as Oda has already begun slipping in the possibilities that, you know, Momonosuke could be Joy Boy. Though, of course, that would be conflicting with the idea that the Sovereign was yet to be born. Unless, of course, the Sovereign is another figure independent of Joy Boy. Not to mention Vivi is a possibility many have thrown out there, etc, etc. Point being, other options exist for these roles besides Luffy. Though, of course, everything in the narrative at the moment logically points to Luffy being the answer across the board. However, in general, the main point is that we have 1,000 chapters of storytelling that establish certain ideas about the main character and the theme that he embodies, as well as the primary theme of the story. And while these ideas would undeniably be contradicted by suddenly forcing a lot of determinism, predestined roles, chosen one abilities, and general chosen one tropes onto that character, it is likely that Oda is very aware of this and is setting up the story in a manner to defy most of our expectations. So if you enjoyed this video, then definitely like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this every week. And for my viewers, you can actually get Surfshark VPN right now, today, for 83% off and three months free by using my code MORGE. The link is in the description below. Thank <laughs> you.